Hello world and welcome to Microsoft Unboxed. I'm one of your hosts, Colleen O'Brien, and this is my friend and co-host, Sonia Dara. And every week, we're telling stories of Microsoft technology as well as the people behind that technology. The topic for this week's episode is, drumroll please, Animal Tech. Viewers, remember to subscribe to our channel. There is an adorable red little button right over here. You can go ahead and click on it, and then you're subscribed, and you will be up to speed on all of our episodes that are weekly every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific. OK, back to animal tech, which is a term that we made up. So yeah. What's the cutest animal? Ooh, this might get contested. Obviously, there's puppies and kittens and all like the favorites. I'm a big fan of baby goats and like pygmy goats and they're just hopping everywhere and have you ever seen the video of Buttercup and she like jumps on another goat and like parkours off of them and backflips and they're like very acrobatic baby goats. I follow this Instagram handle called Round Boys. It's photos of animals that are very round. What? Yeah. Have <laughs> <laughs> I not heard this? A baby bird that's like very round or like a tiny mouse or a dog that has been groomed into, you know, a, a spherical fur baby. Nice use of the synonym. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. But nothing's as good as like our producer's dog's channel. Detective Stabler Golden. Yeah, Detective Stabler Golden. Great Amazing. follow, highly recommend. I think we can agree that there is huge opportunity for artificial intelligence in the world. People have been following our series. They. It's a motif. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's a motif. Everyday AI, because it's everywhere. AI is obviously benefiting us. It's infused into the products that we're using every day. How are we extending the power of AI to the wild kingdom? I don't know. You tell me, Colleen. I will. <laughs> How snow leopard selfies and AI can help save the species from extinction. That's awesome! We're talking snow leopard selfies today. Kostip Sharma is what you would call a cat scientist with a daunting task. As a wildlife biologist studying one of the world's most magnificent, fluffy-tailed, and elusive big cats, snow leopards. They make um, them sound so cuddly. They're vicious too, but they're cuddly. <laughs> snow leopards are incredibly elusive. Yeah. Costum has been following them for many years and he's only had two confirmed sightings of these cats. What? Yes. Wow, I didn't realize they were that rare. What a dedicated man. They're wearing their invisibility cloaks on the mountains. But the estimated population of snow leopards has dwindled from 6,000 to 4,000. That's it? But because they're so elusive, we have no idea what the oh. exact number is. <laughs> There's this great interest in studying them to figure out how we can preserve the snow leopard population. One of the ways that we have figured out how to do this is by embedding cameras with heat and motion sensors into the habitat of these snow leopards. When animals, hopefully the snow leopards, are walking by the cameras, we can get a shot of them. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of misfires on these selfies. They're also taking photos of other animals like goats. Mountain which... goats, I was just about to say, there must be goats everywhere in these mountains. Just like goat selfies. Yeah, so you're trying to get these majestic snow leopard photos and then all of a sudden the goat is all up in frame. Hey, 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 hey. I'll take those selfies, that's fine. Another problem is because they're on the mountains, a lot of them are getting just covered by avalanches. But when the cameras do go off, we're getting a lot of photos. Awesome. 30 to 60 cameras could generate between 200 and 300,000 images. Wow. So if you think of all of those misfires, all of the rogue goats that are getting into the shot, there's a lot of data to process there. Right. So Costub and the Snow Leopard Trust are using the power of AI to sort through and categorize all of these images and pull out the ones that are actually getting the snow leopard in the shot. Are they able to recognize different snow leopards at this point? That is the next step. So we spoke a little bit about that in our AI for Earth episode. Wildbook is doing yeah. a lot of photo aggregation and leveraging AI and machine learning to identify individual animals within right. a species, like Frank the Hammerhead Shark. Sorry, sorry for that. 
hammerhead shark. I was like, where is she going with this? Yeah, but we're not there with the snow leopards yet. That's coming soon. I'm really excited to start identifying those individual snow leopards. I'm going to be talking about a different species called purple martins. They migrate 6,000 miles between the Amazon forest in Brazil to Walt Disney World. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Like every year? Every year. And of all places, they have a pretty big set of nests in Animal Kingdom. They're taking their annual family trip to Disneyland. Exactly. They're frequent flyers. They uh, have the annual pass. So Microsoft is pairing up with Disney's Emerging Technologies team, as well as Disney's Animal Science and Environment team. And they are trying to understand more about Purple Martins. Their populations are also declining. Um, it's fallen 40% since 1966. Similar to the snow leopards, they have little cave dwellings. So it's really hard to kind of look in and see. They would see birds fly in with a giant dragonfly and they're like, do they feed that to one of their birds or like one of their chicks or all of them? Not really understanding like what makes a good Purple Martin parent. Right, and what can we do to help create better environments for them to parent? We're investing in the parenting skills. Yeah. Purple Martin. Yeah, we're like, good job parents, here's what you can do more. Microsoft and Disney are creating smart birdhouses now. Created these man-made, essentially gourd-shaped homes with cameras inside, temperature sensors, humidity sensors, pressure sensors. Purple Martins are awesome. They're like, yeah, help us out. We'll help you out, like it's cool. Synergy. So they have all these tall poles mounted all around the different resorts and like including the animal kingdom and they've created a bird resort. So it has, like I mentioned, HD cameras. They have all these sensors that are linked up to the cloud. You have these like intelligent cloud, intelligent gourds, <laughs> right? From like it's the edge kind of is in the gourd. They've also created like noiseless fans in there to like keep it cool and regulated and they run temperature checks. It's very cozy. It's like a five-star resort for these birds. They're living large. Yeah, they're living large. I would love like a Cribs episode of right? Purple Martin. <laughs> Come on in, check out my gourd. It's just really cool to see us partnering up with Walt Disney to study these birds, but also just create a better habitat and environment for them using our technology. It's pretty cool. So whether it's capturing selfies of snow leopards or investigating the living situation of purple martins, technology can be used to give us a better point of view, better perspective on our animal friends. I know this isn't quite a gourd, but we do have a box. And that takes us to our next segment. We're outside the box. Weak transition, let's go. If you wrote a book, what would it be called? My book would be called Waiting for Your Next Meal, The Colleen O'Brien Story. Are you always thinking about your next meal? Plan my life around meals. Like, when can I have a next taco? I love exploring cultures through food. I love trying new dishes. Meals are really tent poles in my day, and everything else is just waiting for the next one. Sonia, what did you name your first car? It's pretty nerdy. Um, I had a Nissan Maxima. Transformers had just come out and I was a big fan of it and so I called it Maximus Prime. <laughs> Did you always refer to it as that like when you no. got close to it? No, I'm like this is my car. I have one. Yay. I actually wrote it in my Georgia Tech application. <laughs> you wrote about your car and your I wrote about Transformers in my car. Yeah. Okay, give me the face, it's fine. <laughs> That's gonna wrap it up for Outside the Box, but if you'd like to submit a question for next time, please email the address below or leave a comment below the video. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to subscribe to the channel. There's a button right there, go ahead and click it, and then you'll never miss out on our lovely faces. And that's the end of the episode. If you can't get enough of us, I would highly recommend subscribing to our podcast, Women in Business and Technology, available right here. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at our social handles right here.